and the last years of my career are heavily connected to those books, the domain-driven design. The domain-driven design, the old movement which was started by uh, Eric Evans and his famous book called Taking Complexity in the Head of Sorter in 2003, those books completely changed the way I am thinking about the software and how I am implementing the software itself. Um, why? Because I realized that in software development, we've got three phases, completely different. The first one is all about the capturing, the capturing requirements, capturing the knowledge, extracting the knowledge from the customer, from the clients, from the business. And we've, when we've got some knowledge extracted, we need to embed this knowledge into the code, right? So this is a place when you can when we can use all these uh, architecture concepts. Uh, you can use, uh, for example, uh, patterns, all the stuff which allows us to embed this knowledge into the code. And the, finally, when we've got the knowledge embedded into the code, we need to do everything which allows us to protect this solution from the world. I mean that <clears throat> we need to, if the, the, the software contains some boundaries, Thank you for the doors. <laughs> it will be more quiet here. So if we've got some boundaries in software, for example, between services, between microservices, between contexts, we would like to protect those boundaries to not mess our solution. So in long term, this is a, probably one of the most important part in software development. In reality, the protecting is more or less like keeping our concept clean. So for example, we can, in the implementation phase, we can use concept like ArcUnit to check if our uh, concept, if our architecture is still, is still valid. So when someone, one of the developer introduce a change which allows uh, which breaks the rules, and the, the something will be pro unprotected in the application, so this, this commit, the change may be automatically rejected. So in long term, yeah, protecting is very, very important. In the part of embedding, it's more, more about uh, the tactics, all the patterns we know from the domain-driven design, tactical um, uh, part of the life, uh, all the architectures like command query responsibility segregation, or even sourcing, yeah, this is a part of embedding. But the part of the capturing, this is probably the most important and probably most difficult part in every single IT project. And uh, from my perspective, in my opinion, because of two reasons. One is that, for example, user story, the, the part of the requirements we are uh, always looking for in the, um, in the, in the sprints, it's just a start of the discussion. It's just an initial idea what clients really, really want to, to achieve. But the reality is that, like in iceberg, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of other things related. And usually, this, oh, it's, it's <laughs> cut it. Yeah, it's reality. Uh, yeah, by the way, reality. <laughs> and uh, the, the, the part which is hidden, invisible from the perspective of user story, is probably very, very important because of connections, because of pre-requirements, because of consequences we need to take care and we need to implement. Uh, and yeah, understanding the full landscape of requirements is probably even more important than the implementation. Um, I would like to say what, what Eric Evans said, that in most projects, the critical complexity is, is not the implementation, it's the understanding. Understanding of the problem, understanding of the, what the problem really is, and then we need to apply the valid solution for that. And the second thing, because the, 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 the user story is just the beginning, is the jargon, the terminology we are using as a development teams in the communication of the, with, with the business guys. So the terminology. Uh, most of the developers, developers looks like very, very, uh, are very familiar with the technology and this terminology explodes on the communication sessions. So if the terminology is well known in the IT, but the business probably is not familiar with a lot of other wording we are using. So this is a kind of barrier. So, um, it also the reason that for many for many business related meetings they failed because of the communication and the language, and both of the problems were addressed by this guy by Alberto Brandolini in 2013 
which Alberto proposed a new way of thinking about the requirements, new way of thinking about the communication between people. Uh, instead of putting too much attention on on the nouns in, in requirements, looking for the entities, looking for the properties of the software, of the objects inside those requirements, let's focus on the verbs. Let's start to, to tell a story, uh, stories about the software using the very, very basic concept, like events. The events that I mentioned in the previous talk. For example, when I would like to say a story about my, my software, about my business cases, which should be uh, supported by the software, I can Make, I, I, I can tell a story which points to very, very significant point of time, which is which every single point of time I would like to mention is very, very important from someone's perspective. At the beginning, okay, usually from the business perspective. So uh, the case I would like to show you is just the extraction from one of my projects in the last year. So <laughs> the domain of this project was a little bit related to the, to the previous talk, the KLM talk about the predicting, predicting um, a number of passengers in the flights. So in this domain, when we've got a moment when the client uh, would like to, to request a reservation, so we can point this moment uh, and, and put it on the timeline in the millisecond resolution. So um, in the terms of event storming, we can say, okay, we've got the first event and we can start our discussion because the reservation has been requested. And we can probably attach some properties to this moment of the time. Which reservation, for which customer, when exactly, what else would request it inside this reservation? And on the typical event storming session, we've got a lot of different people related to the project from different perspectives, from business, for developers, maybe from some uh, tester perspective, maybe some front-end perspective. And every, every person on the workshop has some knowledge about the problem. And this knowledge may be ex um, extracted and be exposed, maybe published to the other people on the workshop using this concept. And uh, after a few minutes, on, on, on production event storming workshop, we've got the whole bunch of different events from the domain. Probably most of them are valid, but maybe we've got some events which are completely unrelated, but um, this is a perfect moment to start the discussion if this given uh, event is relevant or not in this particular case. So what we can do with those events, um, we can start to make a stories from them. So for example, we can create a, a, a single happy path at the beginning uh, in our domain, how users interact with our process uh, using the events and express the, the, with these events uh, all the important steps in this project. We can, we can point uh, what kind of actors we've got engaged in this process. Is this customer or not? In this example, yeah, we've got the customer which requests a reservation for the ticket and then our system must check the availability of the flight and some limits if they are um, valid or not. If yes, then we can reserve, uh, we can accept the reservation and process this reservation in further steps. If not, for example, when the availability is, 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 uh, is finished or some limits are exceeded already, we, can, we should re reject this reservation. And of course, there is a moment when we can start discussion. What kind of actions inside our process should be automatically taken? And uh, this is a way how we can express our lack of the knowledge about the process. And from the developer perspective, the knowledge is all the, all the things we need to do because without this knowledge, for example, how to um, support this negative path in the software, the, fin the final solution will be probably buggy. And maybe, maybe there, there are some other actions we need to take, for example, uh, when the reservation will be rejected, we need to propose a similar offer. And this similar offer will be proposed maybe by other agent. So, Maybe it means that in this scenario we've got uh, two different user interfaces, one for the customer, one for the agent, or maybe we would like to optimize this path and make it a little bit automatically, for example, with machine learning, like in KLM. So 
using these concepts and other building blocks proposed in this technique, like um, external system where we can um, extract our knowledge and we can show our knowledge about the connection um, between our system and the external world, like airline ticket AP gateway or email gateway, because there, when the reservation will be accepted, the customer should be notified somehow. We need to conf deliver the confirmation about the about the about the accepted reservation, so we can start to 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 describe the whole our process and the whole environment, which is responsible for running this process. And even storming also our um, allow us to to um, embed some information, for example, um, about the values where our system um, earned the value, like money, or where the money, or, or, or where the value is lost. For example, we need, in this example, we need to pay some for some uh, availability check in, 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 in external systems. And maybe it means that we need to protect some parts of the flow um, to, to, to make it a business efficient. After all, after a few steps, we've got some processes modeled using some selected uh, building blocks from event storming, and maybe we've got some uh, links to, 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 to pull in uh, post-session actions, for example, to answer all the questions, because, because some questions may block the development team before the implementation, or maybe we've got some information that uh, all the process is very, very stable, and we can implement this process. So this is only, of course, just a very, very simple example how the event storming looks like when we've got a few uh, different uh, building blocks like, like events, like, uh, like actors, like hotspots, when we can show the problems, potential risks in the implementation or in the process or external systems. The typical, the, the, the real session is a little bit more complicated because when you introduce a different people from the uh, from the project and different perspective and different things may happen so uh, the typical session looks more or less this way we've got a bunch of people bunch of modeling space we've got a lot of color sticky notes yeah the color sticky notes are <laughs> probably the most important part of this of this one and then we can start model um, I was a part of pure projects where we decided to, to use this technique, for example, for reverse engineering of requirements and the application in software which was uh, 10 years old. The authors weren't in the company anymore, the business was changed, but we had some code. This code was for production, and we had to deliver a new version of the software with new business process implemented. So this was, I would like to show you a recording how the typical session looks like, more or less, to give you uh, a chance to, to, to observe in, 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 in the real world. So we are starting from a, a very, very empty, large modeling space. And we can use this modeling space to express our knowledge or our missing knowledge. So in upper corner, there is a, a time lapse with team, which is responsible for modeling. Um, the team was um, built from only for developers, from developers, sorry. Uh, one of them was also a, a domain expert, the, 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 the person with the biggest, what? sorry, sorry. Yeah, something is wrong with the presentation. Yeah, um, we started from the the, um, the moment when we decided to identify the events from the from the one business process. The process was connected to the money. Uh, every single developer, every single uh, person involved with this application has some knowledge, and and uh, this knowledge was represented by with events. During this phase realize that our knowledge is not complete. So we've got some points where we know that we've got a problem with our understanding of the problem. So every single moment when we realize this was expressed with this sticky note. And then when we've got some um, events to work on that, uh, we decide to organize them 
um, in, the, in the form of the processes, because this part of the system responsible for uh, processing the money uh, was combined from, with many, many different processes. And step by step, process by process, event by event, we decided to, to sort out to see what kind of action we've got implemented in this code, what are the consequences, for example, for this part, from this part, from this part. And then we started to think, okay, so how we can put these things together? <clears throat> uh, this moment, uh, to make you a little bit more um, introduction to this session, this code, code behind this session was t at least 10 years old. It was running on production, it made a lot of money, but the company would like to, to introduce a new features, and the development team realized that, okay, the software is not ready for this kind of modification. So we need to extract the knowledge, how the processes, how this code is built, and then we can start to, uh, to, 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 to write a new version. So it was like reverse engineering from the code. We identified all the events, we identified all the system which are in used or interacted with this process. We identified a core actors engaged in this process. And then we started to thinking about the issues. And all the issue, for example, um, about the misunderstanding um, of the code, misunderstanding of requirements or bad consequences were also extracted for, and embedded into the code. <clears throat> so finally, uh, we decided to, to, to add some namings on the, on the processes and we finished after two days, it was two sessions, um, each session was three hours long, we finished with model which represents a current state of the system. As I, as I mentioned, it was 10 years old application, and during this session, uh, we discovered that the system is completely broken because there are, there are a lot of places where there are leaks of the money, leaks of the uh, customer satisfaction, and everyone was unknown by the team which was using these applications. So in many, many places, we touched the, the, the limits of our understanding of the system. So because of the session was run in the company, so we had to invite some, some people and we can ask them questions. And usually <laughs> it was a little bit surprising because the answers are completely, usually were completely unrelated to the company policies because some processes during all the years were a little bit uh, modified by workers, by employees, and were not uh, compatible with company policies. So after the sessions, after this session, uh, we started the implementation of the, of the new part of the system, and we embedded, this was a part of the capturing um, knowledge, as I mentioned at the before. Oh, sorry, I, I would like to skip one slide. <clears throat> Another session from this team, when we decided to use event storming again, was a part of the system where we had to re-implement uh, the action taken automatically by system after one click of the user. So user initiated, uh, you, you would like to initiate a single action, but the consequence of this action were extremely complicated. And this was the moment where the, the user story uh, doesn't provide uh, a, a proper level of understanding for the developers. So one more time, one click from the users and we've got reactions of the systems inside, in thinking of the process uh, extracted with events. So every single um, action we've got um, on the model. And then we can start to um, combine them into the processes start to think which is connected to, to, to which one. We can start to think, okay, what kind of data we need to uh, take on the input, what kind of data we need to extract, expose at the end of the process. And uh, yeah, we've got some also questions, which is because this, was, this session was taken in the middle of the implementation. Uh, but after all, yeah, we've got the mental model of the software, mental model of the, of the business process which uh, must be implemented by the development team. 
And moreover, this model, <laughs> um, after the session, was moved from room to room because the team behind it, um, it was a roadmap from the project. And for every single retrospection, uh, from technical retrospection, the model was moved to the to the meeting room and uh, using some 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 materials, some some comments, um, the development team was able to show the progress of the of the um, of the implementation. Uh, the event storming, from this context, in the context of understanding the, the the gathering the requirements, is very very interesting because during the modeling phase. Usually we need to take a lot of decisions, so, and we can make a mistake. And bad mistakes cost a lot, especially in implementation of, um, of IT project. When we have a chance to model something, to, um, to show our understanding of the system to business, develop, to business people or other developments, we can um, modify our assumption, we can, we can create a, um, a better understanding, and we can adjust created model with our better understanding. So it's absolutely fine to modify this model, to remove a sticky note, and uh, to write a better, better, um, a be a better way of, of the implementation. And usually at the end of the, of the session, uh, it's worth to take a moment and see how many stickies were removed from the model because every sticky session, every sticky removed from the model represents a changed, a change or, or um, better understanding on the requirements. And it also represents um, a cost reduction because when uh, we've got the situation when the um, software with buggy concept were be deployed on the production, the cost of removing of this decision is extremely costful. On the modeling space, on the modeling phase, we've got, uh, I don't know, maybe five cents and few minutes of thinking and maybe a few minutes of the discussion. So this is maybe a thousand times in difference. So the, the inventor of even storming, the, the Alberto Mandonik, uh, one day perfectly quoted this because at the end of the day, what we need to deploy to the production is not expert knowledge. It's, it's only how developer understand or misunderstand uh, those knowledge and nothing else. If developers misunderstand the knowledge, the solution will be extremely buggy. And sometimes you can stop the event storming at this moment. I mean, the moment when uh, the people show how they think about the software, about the processes in the context of the events. But also, you can, if you would like to, to go further, you've got a building blocks and you've got the tools for that. So um, I mentioned that I'm a big fan of domain-driven design, and this technique mm, basically is post, mm, grown from this community. So the very, very mm, connection, um, the, the first connection you can start to think of uh, in the context what else is, of course, connected to the domain-driven design. Um, the step I showed you a minute ago was called a big picture. We would like to see a big picture of the system. But you've got a few steps more. You can start to model a process or you can start to model a software. So let, let's focus on, on, this, on, on the software part. And uh, when you finished the, the, your first part of the workshop with events, you probably only exchange a knowledge nothing else. The developer probably don't know what to do next day. So you can start to um, enrich your model with some other concepts. For example, if every single event is connected to actions in the system, so, so events represents only reaction of your system, something happened and this is a, a reaction of your system, the question is what's happened? What caused this event, or this event, or this event, or this event. Maybe some of them were caused by user action. Maybe some of them were caused by time. Maybe some of them were caused by processes, or other events, or other system. Okay, so when we've got knowledge about it, we can embed this knowledge into the, into the model. So, for example, um, 
This part of the system is related to the loyalty program. When customer buys something, for example, by flight, or by upgrade to the fly, we can um, calculate and convert um, some loyalty points, which will be easy to use for the next purchase in the platform. So, for example, when someone um, paid us and we've got information that payment has been registered in the system, our system will calculate the points and then our system should make an action, I mean, register loyalty points uh, in the context of this customer. And then, maybe one day, after many registration of the points, the customer will um, achieve a given level of points and the, the, the account status will be probably changed from standard to gold or whatever. And then, we can embed this knowledge into this, into this model. So right now we've got two paths. One is just a single um, buying process with some points reservation, uh, points calculation and registering, and then we've got the alternative path, then we've got some upgrades. And those building blocks uh, called commands represent an actions which will be taken automatically by our system. And those events are only consequence of those actions. <clears throat> And probably there are a lot, of, a lot of business rules we need to take care of. For example, not every customer in not every single um, situation uh, when the upgrade will be reached will be automatically converted because of something. And uh, we can attach this knowledge also to the model. And <clears throat> we can introduce another set of, uh, of building blocks like policies, which will be in the form of representing the, the listeners for these events and saying to the process what happens should be, should be in, the, in the next step. Or we can provide some information about the data we need to use in this part of the, of the system. And maybe during the, during the session, realize that, okay, we've got the more uh, paths in the systems. Maybe this part is automatically, but this part needs uh, a human reaction for that, maybe. And from the developer's perspective, it's also very, very important to, to see how this model can be converted to the solution. Um, and maybe when we can start from, um, when we can, <laughs> when we start project uh, from database way of thinking, and finally, we need to store some information into the database. Yeah, we've got some uh, objects which are perfectly related to the database. Probably they will have some uh, business environments which also be, should, should be checked in our system. And using, using all these concepts, we build more and more our understanding uh, of, the, of the system. And one of the final steps, which we the probably the, the, the phase when we notice that our software has a boundaries. And uh, the context of points calculations and the payments are completely separated from each other and should be separately uh, developed. And maybe we've got, the, we've got the perfect case for some bounded context. Using this technique between a development team and business teams is very, very interesting because the, the technique has a very, very low level interest. I, I, I mean, there are few building blocks like events, like commands, actions, which will be taken by system on the customer, uh, on, the, on the actor request or the system request. We've got some policies which are automatically reactions on, on, on something what's happened which was expressed by system, and we've got some information we need to show to the system or to the customer, and that's it. And we can model all the processes and have a very, very simple tool to, to make everyone on the same page. <clears throat> but from the developer perspective, I, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm a software architect, and I usually would like to see some code. And uh, if their session was focused to find implementation solution, yes, the event storming allows us to, to provide an implementation solution. 
Usually most systems are currently divided into the part of business logic, application logic, and infrastructure logic. Um, in this part of the system lists all the databases, here lists all the business rules and business object, and this is the part how we put the things together. And all the events, of course, are inside our business domain. So we can start from if something was happened in our system, we can publish this information to the world. So in the context of the code, the, the, the example is, is taken from the uh, Axon IQ. We've got the business object, which represents a unit of the consistency of our data. And every, if every single time when something happened in this part of the system, we can show this change to the rest of the system. And we can decouple things at the, at the end of the day. We can recreate a state of our system, state of our objects using those concepts. So every single time when we would like to recreate state of our system, state of our objects, we can download some, some data from the database. We can use some um, code to push some business processes forward. So for example, we can use um, some sagas which were discussed on other um, talk during this conference. We've got a set of actions given by, maybe by customer, maybe by, 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 by system. We've got the consequences of those actions. And we've got a possibility to roll back them even if they are spread across many, many different microservices. So we can start to think about this concept like um, like transactions in the, in the microservice system. And finally, if I'm the developer, I can build a connection between a model and my code, because every single time when I see, for example, this kind of building block in the model, and I see the surrounding of this model, I can convert this to the code and express the business requirements and business needs. And this is, of course, only one of possible implementation because there are a few of them. And finally, maybe we've got uh, some events and we would like to, to, to show some information um, to, the, to the customers, to, to the actors of our system, uh, very, very performant way so we can start to think how we can deliver the data, maybe some concept like command query responsibility segregation where we can separate reads from writes in our system would be very, very useful. And we can convert those events to the, for example, materialized views in tables or something like that. And the last part, if we're talking the, the, the distributed system where more or less maybe all of them has very, very similar architecture, we can use those events, those units of our event storming discussion uh, to make a data flying between the applications. So maybe uh, we can use, for example, a mentioned on the uh, previous talk, we can use Kafka. And then if something very, very interesting happened in one system, we can publish those information and this information in the form of the event maybe be catched up and processed by other system. And as a consequence, there will be another event, another event, another event, another event. Um, another interesting part of this session is that when we start to, to, to crush the requirements, even if we got a stories, user stories at the beginning, we can, for example, start to collect um, acceptance criteria uh, for, for all these user stories. So every single acceptance criteria for user story should probably follow this given when then uh, structure but when we start to think that we can express state of our system with events, in this part, we can express um, the action of the, of the system taken by the user by this part, and our expectation about the result by this part, we can end up with something like that. We can start to express our acceptance criteria with code, which is extracted directly from the model. And no matter if we decide to extract this state using the events or we would like to describe our expectation in the form of events or in the form of read model or 
another and another and another. And I don't know if you notice one important part. Every single time when developer open the code and see something like that, oh, sorry, <coughs> maybe, maybe this one, um, when you see a naming of the classes, naming of the elements, naming of the components, very, very connected, okay, sorry, uh, connected to the business terminology, the problem with uh, translation between IT and the business disappear because everyone is using the same terminology, the same naming, the same wording, which is not technical focused, which is a business focused. And then for the next developer and the next developer and the next developer, it's very, very easy to jump in into this code because the expectations, the, the rules are written in business language. Very, very useful and very, very handy um, for every single day work with the project. And a friend of mine from my company decided to create this repository. It's called DDD by Example Library. When they show a whole project, this is an open source project. Everyone can um, take a look. And they started from set of requirements from the library and then step by step using the event storming, the example by example, uh, example by specification by example from um, architecture models like C4 by Simon Brown and the finally code, they showed every single stage of modern uh, enterprise project. So if you would like to be interested with this software, I would like to, to publish a um, link to this repository after the, on, the, on, the, on, on the Twitter. So you, can, um, you, you will be able to, to see the connection between the model prepared with the business to the implementation, which is very, very important for the developers. Yeah, the project is written in Java, but uh, all these concepts are completely um, unrelated to the technical parts, the, this cross-platform and the cross-technology. So for example, this one, um, the company called Argency prepared a Rails event store, which is a implementation of some of those concepts in the Ruby world. So, so for example, um, using this part of the software, you, you one more time you've got the option to embed a te the, the business terminology exactly in the code. And uh, as I mentioned, this even storming technique was <laughs> at the beginning very, very connected to the domain-driven design community. But even if you are not developer, even if you are not interested in domain-driven design and you don't care about the meaning under those building blocks, you can still get some benefits from that. So, for example, in one of the projects, we had a very, very large database and uh, the large application where the logic was written directly in database. So not the best situation <laughs> for developers, for testing purposes, for anything. And uh, we started using this technique to make a re reverse engineering of this database. So instead of thinking in the concepts of events, because this application was even not uh, written in the, in the terminology of events, um, we started to think, okay, what kind of actions are happened in the in the database, what kind of um, situations we've got, and we, the question is if we can model uh, those actions using this terminology. So every single time when an application we've got the decision from the user or decision of the system, we've got the action on our database. Every single time when we've got a business object in our system, we've got the table or record in the table. When we've got the, the, the reaction of our system, we've got the, some change in our data. And finally, when we've got some um, automatic reactions, maybe which will be stateful because we would like to, 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 to gather some changes, for example, from weeks from the application, in the terminology of database, we've got the triggers and procedures. And finally, read models, we've got the selections views. And we was able, using those terminology, those concepts, we prepared a reverse engineering uh, a database and provided a knowledge for the team, which was very, very useful for the um, re-implementation. 
The event storming allows you to, to create a workshop in different formats. For example, in a workshop called a big picture, you are focused on the events. You would like to point important um, moments in the time. You would like to, to see some boundaries. You would like to see some systems reactions. You would like to see some people's actors involved in this process. But maybe you would like to go further. Maybe you would like to, to, to model some processes. You would like to see some rules of these policies. So every single rule, maybe one more time, involved in the model. Maybe you would like to see some metrics, how this model is performing. And maybe your system should automatically react because of, for example, uh, some drops in this metrics. Yeah, it depends. And finally, maybe you would like to, to design some software. And uh, you would like to, 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 to implement some, some, I don't know, maybe Java, maybe Python, whatever uh, software. And this workshop is, <laughs> if I would like to, to make one sentence, it's not about the, the modeling. It's all about the communication. And uh, moreover, building a common understanding on something. On every single workshop, uh, large scale or small scale, we've got the moments like this. By the way, this is a photo taken and production session. We've got the people we are discussing on every single point which is problematic. Th this one or this one, another situation when we are building a common understanding using a business concept like important change in the system. And this change, this sticky notes, maybe be expressed in the code in the form of class or whatever. But at this moment, yeah, we are building a common understanding. Or this one. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of other questions should be, should, which should be uh, addressed before the implementation. For example, when I've got the event and I've got the command, the decision from the user, and I had to uh, pull some data from the, maybe database, maybe external systems to make it happen, if there is only one place where I can process this data, or maybe this data should be split across other other services, what this data uh, affects, what is affected in this by this data in the, the, the context of the whole system, yeah, it depends. But when we see some part of the system in the form of the model, yeah, we can track some dependencies, we can ask the right questions to the right people. After the end of the day, <laughs> I would like to one more time quote Alberto. The software development is, is not about the coding, it's all about the learning. Uh, developers learn all days in different forms, and the working code is finally a side effect. And the, the quality of this working code is the quality, the measure is, is measured by level of understanding of the process. And this tool allows me to bring all, every single person uh, engage in this in this process very very quickly into the same point. So thank you very much. <laughs>